recovery perspective, it's interesting as well because um, it requires a lot of change to, uh, to remove yourself from a situation that's causing that burnout and that mental fatigue. Personally, I changed everything about my life except for my friends and my family to, uh, to improve that situation. Where I trade where, where I live, how I live. Um, my health is, is improved, uh, more exercise, more sleep. Um, I changed my job considerably, so I was in uh, security operations manager. Uh, and so I was constantly working 80 plus hour weeks, um, constant interruptions in the middle of the night to deal with uh, the, the latest critical issue, you know, three in the morning, infrastructure outages, things of that nature that really detract from um, kind of the, the things that, uh, that make our lifestyle healthy naturally, right? So a natural sleep cycle, waking cycle, eight hours of sleep, continuous sleep, REM sleep, um, you know, all of those things become... Right, just at a basic health level, um, changing changing job roles, right? So I work in a much less um, stressful job role. Um, you know, it's, it's there is, I had to give up on some of the personal me, me, me reward that I enjoyed about that. But, um, you know, ultimately I'm much more personally happy for having made that trade off. And, um, you know, I think that we are typically a lot more valued by our organizations than we think we are. And we have a lot more leverage to negotiate those things than we think we do, you know? And a lot of times until you start pushing back on some of those expectations, whether they be internal, created by you, externally created by your organization that you work for, you don't realize how much power you have in constantly and aggressively renegotiating your uh, employment agreement, right? So, um, you know, those things are very important from a personal health perspective. Um, I also changed my physical location. I found that the culture that I was living in, I was in Arkansas at the time, and uh, my political and um, kind of world outlook was completely different than the vast majority of people who live there. So um, I live in Colorado now. Uh, I find that uh, uh, it is much easier for me to integrate into society there. And um, there's already many. Yeah, no, not really. But uh, yeah, ha, ha never heard that joke before. But yeah, so it's, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, and, and I found that uh, I'm much better off for having made all those changes, like all the things that I was afraid of, uh, of, of changing in my life. Um, you know, when you face those fears and you overcome them, it's very empowering. And uh, you'll find that, like, I found that a lot of people were very, uh, very jealous that I put forth the effort to do that, that I made the decision, that I, you know, that there were commitments that, uh, that they felt that they were bound to, that they bound themselves to, that they weren't willing to give up. That, uh, I think that's why you need to make proactive investments in you know, the, the group culture of people that are invested in similar ideas so you can help mentor you or share your values, even professionally, right? That's like why we do any of this eventually to meet people that you know, are interested in the same things we are. Because jealousy is kind of human nature. I call it the crab bucket protocol. You ever seen crabs try to crawl up the bucket before and they're like, oh, where'd that guy back now? I mean, you need to kind of get with like-minded people that are in such a broad industry and you find people that are thinking along the same lines as you but also compel you to essentially kick you in the ass and, to grow and, and mentor you so that way you can meet new people. Yeah. So we're down to three people in the audience here. Do you guys, I mean, do you have any thoughts, questions, I mean, issues that you have dealt with that you want to talk about? I mean, I, we, we can be very interactive here, right? This is not just me just feeling to you guys. Do you, uh, you know, have any, any thoughts, any contribution? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And how unhealthy is that, right? Temporarily, yes. Yeah. Yeah.
that's his blueprint for it based on my interpretation. But you can just tell by his mindset and work for happiness and for the meal and kind of change his whole approach to life. And I believe that. I mean, that sounds great if that's something that you want to have. Because there are definitely people that I've known that kind of change the way they were raised that were born to not only achieve their happiness, but do the same kind of results I did. They kind of had this idea that my path is going to be hard, so I want to change it. You have people that are born to be happy and excited, and they want to be motivated. So, so what were some of the tactics you guys used to, to deal with this long term? Yeah, that's shooting. Yeah, nice. What's that? Ninja Networks. Yeah. So that's a that's a that's a very good. Uh, so I uh, I'm part of 303 now since my move to Denver. So another just massive family that uh, are my people, right? And it's uh, and then you know yeah, get involved in those groups, right? They. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, exactly. There's so many psychological uh, no. and things and biases to get involved with, you know, I don't realize that I'm driving off a cliff where I actually have this. You need that buddy to be like, you're dying there. I know you're in there. So back off. Well, well, the reality of it, too, is, you know, you bring up, up a good point because one of the things that I found is, is that it is much easier for me to get a job in an organization than it is for organizations to find people like me, right? So really, when you start building that social network and you start looking at the employment opportunities that are out there, you realize that you don't need that job as bad as that job needs you, right? And then having those, that social network, that massive social and professional network to get the inside track to make sure that you never have to want for an opportunity in an organization, that's incredibly empowering, right? To know that you can walk in and if they walk you out the door that day, it's their loss. They can't afford to replace you at the same money they were paying you. They're going to have to up the ante, right? That's an incredibly powerful thing. And I, you know, I tell people all the time, if you're not happy in your job, you, you know, you have to be renegotiating your, your employment agreement constantly. And they're not going to come to you and say, we think you would be good in this role. You have to go to them and say, this is where I'm going. How are you going to help me get there? And if they don't have a plan for you and they're not willing, willing to make one, you need to find somebody who is. That's that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's hard. You well, can, and other people can do that for you, right? When you have uh, trusted colleagues and friends, and, and your name comes up or some Christian comes up, they can be your advocate for you as well. Because when I got trained, they didn't have me be excluded or, oh, yeah, totally, he's right on this thing he wants. So it's not just you against everyone else, but you definitely have to take an active role in that. And they all know that engaging and managing that. Your boss is not going to sit you down and be like, okay, hey, tell me what I need to do to get this job. That's something you have to take an active role in as well. Right. So the other side of that is, you know, Typically, they're not going to stick their necks out for people who aren't delivering, right? So I'm talking about the people who are truly passionate about what they do, who are digging in, and who are doing amazing things, right? I consider this group, especially at B-Sides, to be people who are, are part of that community. They would not be here 
talking about things of, of relevance to the community if they didn't care about the community, right? So, you know, I look around, I see a lot of ninjas, the, the 949, the 303, the long time, you know, inner circle family of the hacking community, right? These And these are really the people who should not worry about jobs, right? They're not the people who have to worry. They've got the acumen, they've got the skills, they're, or they're building those. They're building their professional network, right? We can help those people along. We can help them um, not only in their career, but also in their personal happiness, right? So at the same time, you've got that person that you're helping to introduce. You know, you need to also kind of give them some of this wisdom about I've been there, right? The, the 1984 long stare across the table with your vodka, like we've both been there. I sold you, you sold me. We don't want to talk about that, and I don't want you to ever get in that situation, right? So I'm going to tell you some things that you may not understand right now, but in the long term, they're going to be important to you. And, you know, we're going to help you try to avoid that, right? Like I'm going to tell you, you're, going, you're taking a left turn when you should be taking a right, and you may not agree with me, and that's fine, but, you know, know that when, when you get down that path and you need to turn around and go the other way, I'll help you with that, right? So, uh, you know, that, I think that's important too. Like Lance said earlier, the mentorship, that's critical, right? We need to be those people for um, the younger crowd that are coming up in the industry as well. So. Right. So I think we're winding down on time. So uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you hanging out. And uh, thanks for the participation. And uh, have, have a good conference.